Praise the Lord. Indeed, to God alone be the glory. He alone deserves yes. to receive all the worship, all the reason, and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So, have a blessed good morning to everyone. Hallelujah. So, if you have the Bible, please open with me in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Let's continue our lesson uh, to Sunday ago entitled Something Better Than Any Physical Miracles Something Better Than Any Physical Miracle or you can title it in other way Far Better Things or Far Better Miracles or Far Better Testimony than any spectacular physical miracle that we see, that we read, that we hear, or experience. We know that as far as the Bible is concerned, that God is a miracle working God. But not only physical, but most especially spiritual. Now, here in Hebrews chapter 11, let's read one more time. Hebrews chapter 11, starting from verse uh, 29. It says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, also of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong and became valiant in the battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead race to life again. Then let's jump to verse 39. And all this having obtained a good testimony. Good testimony. Through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. That's, I love that. Okay? God having provided something better for us. Or for you and me. Better than in spectacular miracles. Okay, and in and chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, referring to the heroes of faith, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, hope for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand 
of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the ring of the word of God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. O most gracious heavenly Father, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for giving us a perfect gift. Your one and only Son. Because through Him, being united with Him, we can now come, we can now call you our Father, Abba Father, who truly cares for us, who comfort us in all our tribulations, who heal the sick, and who love us exactly the same love to our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, also able to supply all our needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And even who answer our prayers more than we ask or imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for showing who you are in our hearts, O oh God. And we pray today, let the words of our mouth the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you. And as we listen to your words today, give us the grace that as we listen, it must be an act of worship. And Lord, show us one more time, Lord, the glory of Christ, the beauty of Christ, the cross of Christ, more intimately and clearly in our hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And amen. Can we give a clap of praise to the Lord? Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. So as we already started before, as a recap, two weeks ago, that Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the chapter of the heroes of faith of the people of God in the Old Testament. is the chapter of the heroes of faith of the people of God in the Old Testament. Old, the Old Covenant. And because of their faith, they experience what? Incredible, spectacular miracles from God. And in verse 39, tells us they obtain a good testimony. God approve it and say, good testimony before Him and before men. Not bad testimony, but good testimony if you experience this kind of miracles from God. But in verse 40, it tells us that God having provided Something better for us. Or for you and me. Something better. Miracles. Or testimony. Than this incredible miracles that they experience. Better than parting the Red Sea. Better than pulling down the wall of Jericho. Better than subduing or conquering the kingdoms. Um, better than killing the lions with bare hands. Or better than quenching the flames of fire. And better than uh, raising their loved ones from the dead. And there is more. Okay, And if you read the book of Hebrews... One of the repeated words that you can notice is the word better. Okay? How many of you are glad that our God is not just a good God? He's the best God. He's a, his plan is not just only good for us, but better and best. Okay? It's like... You could read that better covenant. Okay? You could read it in the book of Hebrews. And also, better promises. I would say there's nothing wrong with good. Because that's why it's called good. Right? But God had provided something better for us. Okay? 
And what are these better things or better miracles or better testimony that God had provided for us under the new covenant? Just on a recap, no? Ah, uh, we could see that in Hebrews chapter 12, okay? Chapter 1. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. In the NLT translation, it says, When we lay aside, strip off, give up every weight that slow us down. You know, like weight. When you put weight in your ankle, it causes you to slow down, right? And... So when we give up that weight, uh, spiritually speaking, uh, when we do this, it's, it's far better testimony, far better things that God has provided for us. And in Luke 21 verse 34, Jesus warned us this weight that we need to lay aside. All of us has weight that we need to lay aside. Or step off, or give up, and it and it says in Luke twenty one, I think we we'll go there twenty one, uh, verse thirty four. Twenty one, verse thirty four. Jesus, this is the warning of Jesus in the light of his return, and we believe that we are living uh, in the last of the last days. And this is the warning of Jesus by saying, But take heed or be careful to yourselves. Okay, first to yourselves, lest your hearts, okay, yes, your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you. Unexpectedly. So that's why we need to guard our hearts with this kind uh, of the ways that will slow us down in our spiritual growth. And what are these? Carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And they're not just in our hearts, okay? So that we, when Jesus comes, we will not be found uh, not ready, but always ready. So three things. Carousing. Uh, drunken, uh, number one is carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. So let's, yeah, that's why we need to, we need to pray uh, to God. To search our hearts with these three things in our hearts. And also in Mark chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, Jesus mentioned again the weight that we need to lay aside or give up. Number one, we consider that which is the cares of this world. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches. And number three, we consider having the desire uh, uh, of, 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 of something. So number one, the curse of this life. Which means when you are being so attached with the things of this world. Okay? Like Mrs. Joe. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches. There's nothing wrong with riches. Okay, having riches is not evil, but to love riches more than God. And also by thinking that having lots of money is everything. That is called the deceitfulness of riches. As far as the Bible is concerned, having money is not everything. I'm going to say to that. But we need money, but having money is not everything. But having Jesus 
is everything. Having Jesus is everything. Or being united with Christ is everything. Because in Colossians 2.10, it tells us, Because you are united with Christ, you are now complete. Because you are now united with Christ, you are complete. So through completeness, through satisfaction, when you are united with Christ. Yes, we need all these things, but these things is not good enough. Jesus alone can give us true satisfaction. That's why we need to make sure that you are in Christ, that you are united with Christ, and you abide in Christ. Make it sure, beloved, in the Lord. And you and God alone knows that. Don't just be satisfied because you go to church, you're involved in the ministry, that you are in Christ, united with Christ, and most especially, when you're in Christ, united with Christ, you must abide in Christ. That's what we need. Because there are so many people, they started well, but in, uh, not good. So the third thing that means the, the weight that we need to lay aside is the desire for other things. I have said before that even good things, because good things in this world could be or always the enemies of the best. So be careful. Not everything good ends good. Remember, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Eve. When you see the fruit that is good. Okay, so be careful with, 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 with good things. Because good things, oftentimes, is the enemy of the best that God is in store for us. I think we have to read in Mark chapter 4, because this is what Jesus said. Mark chapter 4, verse 18. And Jesus said here, Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. So they hear the word. Okay. And the cares of this life, of this world. The deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in entering in choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. So this this cares of this world, the sinfulness of riches, and the desire for other things, even good things, we must be careful. Because it will if you're careful, it says there, it has the power to choke the word that we hear. And it will cause us to become unfruitful. Even though you hear and understand. So hearing and understanding is not enough. We need to be gripped by the truth and apply it in our lives. Then, we will become fruitful. So here, they hear the word, they receive the word, even they understand the word. But, they didn't lay aside this weight, which is the cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things. And they become unfruitful. And if you are unfruitful, you become useless in the kingdom of God. And this is what Jesus said. That's why, for me, this is far better miracle. Far better things. When God, that's why I pray to God, Lord, help me. 
to lay aside, to give up everything. It might not happen immediately, but Lord, by your grace, help me to say no to these things. Help, give me the grace to say no, to give up the cares of this world, the value system of this world, the difficulties, and the desire for other things. That instead, we become a fruitful and useless. We will become and fruitful. So secondly, a far better thing that than any physical or spectacular miracles. I've said, if you receive physical healing, you receive a good testimony. How many can say amen to that? Yes, yes. Good testimony. But don't be satisfied by just having a good testimony. If you are being blessed by God with physical healing, with good family, don't be satisfied of that. Because God has a plan a better things for us. We need to be upgraded. <laughs> Our testimony. Not just having a good testimony. Experiencing the supernatural miracles of God in the physical realm. If we choose to lay aside the weight that caused us to slow down and cause us to be unfruitful, you will have a better testimony before God and before men. And that is God's will to each one of us. Secondly, a far better thing than any physical miracles is to lay aside or to give up every sin that easily ensnares us. Every sin. Okay? We could say, some people say, we call this uh, venial sin, mortal sin, cardinal sin, or whatever sin. White lies, black lies, or blue lies, or fried rice. But the, Jesus said, we need to what? Give up everything. Okay? All sin that the Lord is pointing you. Okay? May the Lord help us and grant us to be gripped by this truth. I said, Lord, anything that will done to me, Lord God, give me the grace to repent. To King David, the sin that easily ensnare us is Bathsheba. David filled with the Holy Spirit, but the sin that easily ensnare him is Bathsheba, ang babaeng mahilig maligo. To Samson, is Delilah. Okay? My, my Delilah. To Moses, anger. To Elijah, discouragement and depression. To Judas, Iscariot, the love or the deceitfulness of riches. To Demas, colibers of Paul, the pleasure and leisure of this world. Beloved, you studied life, as far as ministry is concerned, is overwhelming. But these people that I mentioned, they were defeated by sin. That's why Sometimes we glorify a person because of his spectacular ministry. But beloved, you don't know their private life. And to us, it could be the same. I'm going to say to that. Yes. Or it could be the same, or probably in different forms and ways, or even more subtle, sophisticated, or private in our minds, our hearts, and motive. That's why when I give an example, it's better to give an example to follow the people in the Bible. For me, only two persons that I want to follow. Jesus and Paul. 
not David. Because when David saw Delilah, it's a problem. Although he was called a man after God's own heart. Samson, strong man. I want to become like Samson. But when he saw Delilah, he became weak. Moses, part of the Red Sea. But it's an anger problem that caused him not to enter into the promised line. Prophet Elijah killed the prophets and called fire to come down. But it's a problem. Severe discouragement, depression that led him to suicide. Judas, he preached the gospel, raised the dead, healed the sick, but it was an inward problem. Love of money. Having money is not bad. But loving money more than God. They must call laborers of Paul in his mission field. But at the end, he chose to go to the world rather than to follow the Lord all the way. That's why for me, I'm not just myself as far as my ministry is concerned. Lord, search my heart, O God. Because you alone can know my hearts. And if anything that you point in my heart, Lord, give me the grace to lay aside everything, to give up everything so that I could have a better testimony before you, first and foremost, before you and before Satan. And I don't mind about before men. Thirdly, of far better things that in the spirit of mystical miracles that God had provided for us is to run with endurance the race that is set before each one of us. To run with endurance the race that is set before us or for each one of us. Every believer has own race or ministry that he need to do. And to run with endurance the race that is set for each one of us, number one, is to love God with all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. And to love our neighbor as our selves. Because in Matthew 24, verse 12 to 13, it says, Because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. And that's what's happening right now. The love of many Christians today grow cold, wax cold. They left their first love and they became lukewarm. And Jesus said, But he who endures to the end will be saved. Endure what? If you read in context, endure in loving God, loving one another, and even loving our enemies. In John 13, verse 34 to 35, Jesus gave a command to his disciple to love one another as he did. And how did Jesus love us? He loved us sacrificially. Jesus is willing to die, sacrifice, and leave the comfort and convenience in heaven because of His love for us. And Jesus said, that's how He wants you to love one another. Now I ask the question to myself, Lord, am I willing to sacrifice even to die? Not only my time, but my life, my comfort, my convenience for the sake of my brethren. But I thank the Lord when Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments, 
And he said, I will pray the Father that will give you another helper. And that is the Holy Spirit. For me, one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit is giving us is, is to help us. So that we can love one another as Jesus loved us. That when you say you love your spouse, you are willing to die. That's why if you want to be happy, uh, or if, if you want to have peace in your house, Jesus is inviting you not just to come, but die. If you want heaven and earth, both of you has to die. <laughs> because if both of you are dead to self, then there is no quarreling or murmuring in the house. How many can say amen to that? The reason why we murmur, we complain to our spouse, and we say, it depends. A dead person could not say, it depends. When you say, it depends, simply means you are still alive to your self. That's how we know. You know, that's why... Sometimes when we go to church, our brethren could say, Wow, what a spiritual. But in the house, it depends. So when it depends, you don't have a good, you don't have a better testimony. If you want to have a better testimony, remove that vocabulary in your heart. It depends. The Lord said, Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And how did Jesus love the church? He laid down his life. He's willing to sacrifice his life. Remember? Happy wife, happy life. And how your wife to be happy? Not at the pens. Die to your self. And I think we, we need this top vice versa. How many guys amen to that? Because I believe every family wants not to have peace in the house. We need heaven. How many guys amen to that? Amen. Heaven on earth. So you might say, who, 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 who will be the first? The wife or the husband? <laughs> you know what? You know which is the first? The spiritual man or the spiritual woman. The spiritual woman will choose to die first. But the carnal man or woman, he say, it depends. <laughs> it depends. But beloved, if you choose to die, you will have peace. But if both of you will just die, you will experience heaven on earth, even though you don't have coffee like me. But for me, if there's coffee, heaven, heaven, heaven. That's me. Just follow me. Okay. Okay. So, so third of, for, oh, so where are we now? So we're, we're finished the third one, right? Okay, so that's the is that is how to run the race. First, we need to love God, hearts, mind, and strength, and we need to love our neighbors ourselves, and we need to love one another as Jesus love us, starting our spouse or children. Okay, which means that if you are willing to die to your own will. Sacrifice and live your comfort, then you love as Jesus loves us. Secondly, to run with endurance the race that is set before us is to be on fire or to be totally sold out to worship God and serve Him only. In Matthew 4, verse 10, Jesus said to Satan, Worship the Lord your God 
and serve Him only. Which means that our primary ministry is vertical. And that is to love God or to worship God. Then our horizontal service to be a blessing to others is just only the outflow or the overflow of our love for God and our worship to God, not vice versa. The reason why many Christians, their service to God is very shallow, like Martha, they have a murmuring spirit, or they're serving the Lord, because they, they're, they mess up their priorities. They prioritize their horizontal service to people more than the vertical to God, which is loving God, worshiping God every day. So, beloved, if you want to become a blessing to others without murmuring and complaining and expecting something in return, we need to prioritize worship. And worship is not just Sunday. Worship for believers is every day. Some people, they are like uh, arguing which day, Sunday or Saturday. For believers, it should be what? Every day. We don't worship day, we worship Jesus. And if this is our priority, then we serve God effectively. Vertical first. Spend your time every day to worship God. Even in good times or bad times. Then, love it. I experienced this. I've said, if you want your service to God become like a joy, not shallow, not a burden, prioritize worship. And pray to God, Lord, help me, you know, to worship you. Remember, God the Father is looking at true worshiper, not true preacher or service or servants, but worshiper. If you want to be a true servant, be a worshiper first. And be a lover first. That's it for me. I don't want to be called preacher. I want to be called lover. That I love my Jesus. That I worship the Father. Fourthly, a better thing or better miracles that God has provided for us, more than physical miracles, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse, 2 uh, 12 verse 2, is in the Amplified Translation it says, Hebrews 12 verse 2, is looking away from all that will distract us. Remember, there's so many distractions. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith. Looking away from all that will distract us. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, or fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of our Faith. I don't know if you know Corey Ten Boom. I, I, I'm being blessed what he said because he said, if you look at the world, most especially today, you will be distressed. If you look within or to yourself, you will be depressed. But if you look at Jesus, you will be at rest. Okay? If you look at the world, you will be distressed. If you look at within yourself, you will be depressed. But if you look at Jesus, you will be at rest. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. And I will give you what? Rest. rest. There are so many right now restless souls. 
Most of the world leaders today, if you heard the news, they said, be prepared for the worst. Because the worst is yet to come. That's what the world leaders today, we debate the, the, in, in, in the United Nations, they said, be prepared for the worst. Because the worst is yet to come. Which is, he said, which is more economic catastrophe will happen. And we could see right now, the cost of living is very high. Alam mo kapatid, ang hindi lang tumataas, unano. Pero yung bilihin ngayon, grabe. Super. And also they said, more death, more suffering, more destruction is going to happen. And it started. You know? The pandemic is not yet finished. Hindi pa tapos ng pandemic. Then what? Then war? Economic crisis. Many people today ask a question. If normal life is coming back. Yan talong nila. Is normal life is coming back? I believe, you can disagree with me, but I believe the right and biblical answer is no. Why? Because the Bible says so. I based on the Bible. You say that in the last days, perilous times. In the last days, they will continually wars, rumors of wars, nation against nations. There is famines, there is pandemic, there is earthquakes, and lawlessness. So the right answer, biblical answer, is no. It's no. So the worst is yet to come. That's why, if you still remember God's two specific messages last January, the title of the message, Be Prepared for the Worst. Because the worst is yet to come in this world. But there is hope for the true followers of Christ. There is hope. Because our God is in control of everything. But not for everyone. But only for those who are in Christ, with Christ, and abide in Christ. So beloved, make sure that you are in Christ, united with Christ, abide in Christ, and follow Christ, and love Christ. Because the best is yet to come to you. Why? Because Jesus promised He will come back again. The normal life will not come back, but Jesus promised He will come back again. Question, when? Anytime soon. Because in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, 12, and 20, Jesus said three times, I am coming quickly. The first coming of Jesus, He came as a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But His second coming, He will come as Lion of Judah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to take away His bride, to take away His church, and to take away all believers around the world. So please tell your neighbor, be prepared. Jesus is coming to take you home. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, tells us the word of encouragement or the word of comfort from God that we need to be gripped by it and share it to our fellow believers. Kayo po na may mga Facebook, itong pinakamagandang issue nyo. 
instead of showing all the foods or whatever, share Jesus. Okay? Make Jesus known to your friends. So kung nagpo-post na naman ka dyan, lubos-lubosin na natin kapatid. Panahon na para magsaya. Okay, first, uh, Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. It says here, Paul said, this is the very comforting word as far as the second coming of the Lord. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, to the believers. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. Concerning those who have fallen asleep or who died, lest your sorrow as others who have no hope after this life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of our archangel, and with what? The trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. All the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with His word. Comfort. Encourage one another with His words. Use your Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. Comfort one another with not lots of food or smiling. He said, you know, Oh, it's a happy family on Facebook. But in reality, it's not a happy family. The Bible says, comfort one another with this word. What word? This one. Our blessed hope. What word? To have a glorified perfect body from the Lord. To be reunited with our loved ones to follow the Lord. And to be with the Lord always and forevermore. With full of joy and glory. So beloved. It's better. It's, you know, when you use your Facebook, it's better to share Jesus. And in... John 14, verse 1, Jesus himself said, Let not your heart be troubled. There's so many hearts right now is being troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many what? Mansions. So don't worry if you don't have a house here. Just, just make sure. You have an RSB fee. And Jesus said, If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what he said, I will what? Come back again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. There you may be also. And the Bible says, in the presence of God is what? Fullness of joy. Here on earth, we just experience what? It's just a tickle of joy. (laughs) But fullness of joy when you are in the very presence of God. And when, and the coming of God, you will receive what? Glorified, perfect body. No more arthritis. No more pain. No more gout. No more sickness. No more sorrow. No more death. 
So beloved, that's why physical death for the believers is not negative. Or is not a great loss. Why? Because physical death to believers is a graduation to glory. And number two is the gate of endless joy. It's a graduation to glory. Sooner or later, at least, you know, Brother Boy, Brother Joseph, Brother Nato, they already gra- <laughs> they graduated. You know? But if you want to, be, to, to graduate, but God wants to graduate, not just have a honor of summa cum laude, but to have a better testimony. That your goal is not just to go to heaven, but before you go to heaven, you want to serve the Lord. Have you guys amen to that? Amen. You want to do the Father's business, knowing the Lord, and, know, and, and, and make Jesus known to others. That's why Paul said, For to me, to live is Christ, and when I die, is gain and far better. And not only physical death is not negative, but sometimes suffering. How many can say me to that? And I swear before that suffering is also a gift from God. Because suffering is God's way to purify us and make us on fire to the Lord. I know that when you suffer, sometimes we don't understand. But if you love Jesus, the Bible says, All things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. And when you experience suffering because of Christ, then you will experience greater joy and greater glory. And fifth, of far better things than any physical miracles that we see, hear, or experience is when we take up our cross daily and follow Christ. For me, this is better things. When I take up my cross daily and follow Christ. In Luke 9.23, Jesus said, If anyone decide to come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. As far as my personal conviction, I'm talking about myself. As I meditate this word of Jesus, I am fully convinced. I am fully persuaded that to take up my own cross daily is better than any miracles that I hear, see, and even experience. And better testimony. That's why, Lord, help me, give me the strength and the grace to take up my own cross daily. And to take up my own my cross daily, Lord, help me to die to myself, to my own will. Help me, Lord, I cannot do this. Help me to die to the things of this world. Help me to die to all kinds of sin. To die to the sinfulness of riches, to die to our self indulgence, gratification, and to die to any desires other than the desires of knowing you, loving you, and make you known to others. Every day, this is my prayer to God. Because I come to the point, Lord, David. He has a spectacular ministry, Moses, but he was defeated. And I want not just having a good testimony. I want a better testimony. Because this is your perfect will to your children. And in Matthew 21, 16 to 21 to 23, we heard that before. Jesus said that if you hear any voices... There are so many voices today that we hear. Or many preachers or teachers that preach. But if you hear any voices, whether coming from other people, from you, or any preaching or teaching that contradicts the way of the cross, 
that contradict the way of the cross. Jesus himself said, that is the voice of Satan. And we could see, read that in Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. If you hear the voice, not to die to yourself, to yourself well, then that voice is coming from Satan himself. But if you hear a voice to walk in the way of the cross, that is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now last Sunday, remember we asked for love gift for pastor who died. In the house, and I said to, to my wife, you know, if really God's will, then I don't I know, really, really, God will speak and touch people's lives. And after the worship, I'm completely out. I don't remember that I need to ask something to give. And right now he received, and he was so grateful to receive that gift. Para makalabas ang patay. At may bonus pa dahil yung pastor na yon mayroon siyang two months old baby and this milk. And I know God hear their voice more than the us or imagine. Because our Father, remember, is more willing and able to answer our prayers more than we ask or imagine. And God probe them to them. Using our lives. And while I'm sitting down here, I said to my wife, I heard, I said, Lord, how do you speak to Elijah? A small voice. And how do you speak your apostles? The Holy Spirit speak. That's my longing of my heart. Lord, can you speak it to me? And I experienced this last Sunday here while I'm sitting. And then, it's not my thing to hold my cell phone during service. But after the service, I hold my phone. And remember, when you hold your phone, right? You have to, uh, your, your password. I don't even touch the password. But I read the text of my wife. Don't forget to the voice of God and the cell phone. And I said, how, how do things happen? Because oftentimes when I call the Bible, my, my cell phone, I have to post the password. But when I hold the puzzle, I read, I read it right away. And I said, Lord, I want that kind of leading to me. For me, it's priceless. You can have all that the world. But just, Lord, now I experience the love of my heart. You allow me to experience. And I want that kind of experience every day. That I will not lead by the need or by the emotions, whatever. But I will lead by the still small voice of your Holy Spirit. That's why we need to die to ourselves. Because the way to live is to die. How many guys say me to that? The way to live is to die. If you want to experience the resurrection power of Christ... We need to die. That's why, Lord, help me to die. Because, Lord, when I die to myself, die to anything that is unlike you, you promise I will experience your resurrection power. And the life of Christ will made manifest in me and through me. And number two, you will bear much fruit and not just much fruit but the fruit that will last or will remain that's why Lord 
I want all the fruits that you gave me will remain. You know my prayer to God? Lord, everyone here will remain until you come. Will remain loving you with all their hearts, soul, mind, and strength. I don't care if how much of you. Even just few. But it's my joy, Lord. Help all the houses of His church. Will remain to the very end. Loving you with all their hearts. Worshipping you in spirit and in truth. Whom you are seeking. And will not just satisfy of having a good testimony. But their desire is to have a better testimony. Which is spiritual. When we choose to give up every weight, every sin that easily ensnare us. And to run with endurance the race that set before us. And looking away all the distraction, but focusing our eyes on Jesus and taking our own cross every day and to fully and to follow Jesus. For me, this is priceless testimony. Before God, just before God, or even before Satan. So let's pray. Lord, seal this word into our hearts. Lord, we need your grace. Help us to be gripped by this truth and apply it into our lives. Bless your people. Fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, O God. Cause this word not just another words that we'll hear, but cause this word to remain, to grow. And bear fruits that will last. For your glory. For your honor. And to be a blessing to others. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen.